prosperity and happiness of the people. Well, if you're not happy with a judge, how do you get rid of them? You do a bill of address? Well, Joe knows what happens to bills of address. They just get swallowed up by the state house. But yet, under the initiative petition, it'd almost be like saying, Hector, that the people would not have had the right to submit the Declaration of Independence unless the Massachusetts Attorney General approved it and the general court voted on it. That's how insane it's gotten. Sounds somewhat absurd, yeah. If I just may point out as well, the problem with the judges, as you just very uh, adequately explained, is that once a judge is uh, put into his position in Massachusetts, he's there for life. Uh, and it's very hard, as you say, to get rid of him. Other, Massachusetts is only one of three states nationwide that have virtually no way to either review a judge's performance or to elect them in the beginning. Uh, the other two states, I believe, are New Hampshire and uh, maybe Connecticut or maybe Rhode Island. Chief Scott in Holyoke, Massachusetts, submitted an initiative petition mm -hmm. to have a recall on judges, a recertification. Recertification now. Yeah. Every six years, the people get to vote on a judge. I heard on the radio where two years ago it had been approved by the voters, but the general court refused to vote on it, right. and it just died. All that work that he went through was just wasted. Well, we, see, we also see how um, the, the people's <clears throat> votes get ignored. I mean, in 2004, I believe there was a, a ballot, 84% uh, of the constituents in Massachusetts wanted share parenting. And it, it, it brings up this subject because share parenting, there is a conflict of interest with the judges, as you guys are stating, to prevent share parenting in the court systems. Why is that? Don't children have the right to have both parents involved in their lives, regardless of judges being uh, having immunity, whether there's conflict of interest? Don't a child have that right? Doesn't an adult, a parent, have that right under the Constitution to be a parent? Well, you've, you've stated it all. Yes, they do have that right, but for some reason, the judges refuse to protect the rights of the children and refuse to protect the rights of the parents. I mean, the best scenario is one big happy family. Well, if, if there's a divorce, the best scenario is shared parenting. You, you want to keep the, the, the people together, the family together as much as you can, even though there is a divorce in progress. Uh, people, you know, what is it? It takes a village to raise a child? Well, somebody should talk to the judges and say, it takes a family to raise children too. Right, before the village comes the family, which I think, yeah. I think that whole idea was that there, the family was not as important as the greater village. So there is a flaw in that it takes a village to, to raise yeah, them. Yeah, but you, you, the, so. the, the children can't be raised by the village unless there's a family. Right, right. And if, and if a village is good, wouldn't a family be a little bit better? Right, right. I think the problem mm. with the, um, the, idea, the, uh, the problem that's being faced by uh, those who support shared parenting is that you have the, the courts, in my opinion, are much too, they, the tentacles of the court, of the government by way of the courts, uh, are much too enmeshed in what happens in the family. The courts have to be taken out of the family as much as possible. Now, of course, there are instances where, where the government and the courts are going to be involved in the family. But as it is now, as we see with restraining orders, the least acrimony that comes up in a personal situation immediately is um, said to be resolved in a public institution, i.e. the courts. It's totally absurd, it's totally ridiculous. The court should um, be um, the most removed from the family life as possible. Uh, whether it's, a, it's possible to do that in every instance all the time, I don't think so. But the way they are now in getting uh, everyone's personal situation immediately into courts only benefits the, the uh, Bar Association and the legal industry. There's no other reason for it, no well, other reason whatsoever. What would be the incentives <clears throat> for them to, to go against their oath of office to protect the Constitution? It's called billable hours. It's the, it's the lawyer's favorite phrase. How much of their time is going to be billable to the clients? They, they, everything is billable, from scratching down the <clears throat> telephone number on the pad when they take the case to having a two-minute conversation. It's all billable hours. It's about the money. And that, in my opinion, is supported by the ideology that underlies all this, which is that the family structure is something that is not thought of as having any value, value these days. And uh, the most prominent feature of the family structure historically has been the, the father and the man. And so that has ideologically, there's, an, there's been an attack on that for the last 30 to 40 years. 
How would you like to see the Governor's Council um, operate? Well, I'd like to see the Governor's Council a lot more transparent than it is now and a lot more uh, de, um, devolving to the local areas where people are going to be placed in positions of, of judgeships. I'd like to see a lot more vetting of people. I, I like, I'm, not, I'm in favor of looking at, how, at, at these nominees as to how they would, how they approach these questions of a conflict between, for example, a person's due process rights and a statutory law, such as the restraining order, which uh, on its face is unconstitutional, but yet the judges by law are mandated to enforce it. Well, they have discretion. They can either enforce it 110 uh, percent, uh, even though it's unconstitutional, or they could use their discretion to say, well, look, this really doesn't meet, uh, meet what's needed here. We're going to toss this out. This complaint is frivolous. Most ROs, in our opinion, as the Fatherhood Coalition, are either frivolous or false. And so most ROs should be uh, squ uh, quashed and, and not re even considered. And uh, when you say ROs, you're talking about short word for restraining, restraining orders. Restraining orders, right. Okay. right. Now, restraining orders was brought up on our last show uh, with the two attorneys, and they discussed that these restraining orders stay in a particular database uh, with no chance of ever being removed. Expunged. So my question is, if these restraining orders basically are being abused with frivolous um, claims. Frivolous and false. Yeah, you know, false information in some cases. Is it constitutional for them to keep your name if you haven't been convicted of a crime uh, to be kept in, on, on a particular database? Well, I've asked to have my Corey record removed because the stu two Stoughton police officers who arrested me pled the fifth. How can you be under arrest if the police who arrested you are pleading the fifth to their actions under color of law. I've posed that to many attorneys and the silence is deafening. But I have asked Governor Deval Patrick, I says, Governor, you know, swipe of a pen, law of the land. Just expunge all those people who have arrest records with no convictions or restraining orders where the charges were later dropped or something like that. And, and the silence is scaring me. It's, Hector, it's as if the government does not correct mistakes. Well, if I could, uh, John, I think sure. part of the problem and the reason behind that is the government officials, such as the, uh, the governor, are, are they, they're still in the 1970s and 1980s mindset where they think the general population actually supports these unconstitutional laws. I think he's, they're going to be in for an awakening. Uh, as the general populace is awakening, so will the leadership. And as soon as they realize that, they're going to... No, I, I hope so. I mean, yeah. as you stated, you know, they, they swore an oath to uphold the Constitution. Well, the Constitution has certain principles that they are to uphold. My question is, and I've asked, what constitutional function is performed by the retention of a name on a database where no crime ever occurred? And again, the silence is deaf. I'm, I'm talking to professional people, the governor, his associates, the attorney generals. It's, well, what constitutional function is performed by my name being on a database where the police admitted they committed a crime by pleading the fifth. Their names aren't on it, my name is. And people who have restraining orders, I know a gentleman, because he had a restraining order, got married again a second time, his new wife's um, authorizations to work in certain facilities was denied because of his restraining order, which had been dismissed. Yeah, it's out of control. It's, yeah. a, it's a system too big. One of my favorite organizations, uh, the name that I like the best is Downsize.org. The basic premise of it is government is way too big. Problems like this are a result of an, a, a, a government out of control. There's no way to resolve it. Devolution of power is the, is the order of the day, generally across right. the board, for a lot of problems we face uh, in the country. So yeah. when we were growing up, we were led to believe that government worked for the people. Who does government work? Who who does government work for now? Basically, I've I've been a, a real bear about this, but it appears that government works for itself. There are more people now working for government than for private employers, right? And each one of those government workers gets a pension that the private workers may never see. And and their taxes will have to pay for the pensioned workers. And I've asked people, well, we're in the Constitution. Does it say that? a public servant deserves a pension uh, upon retirement, and there is no answer.
And I mean, this is where I'd love to see every American have a tax-free savings account. You save to your own pension fund, you invest the manner that you want to, you take it wherever you go, and invest the first day that you and, put and it in. And more importantly, you have control you over it. You have control over it. Because right, right. this, this is the crux of the matter. Control over control. assets and resources is now firmly in the government's hand, uh, grip, or uh, in addition to the government employees that you're talking about, the special interests that are working hand in glove Correct. with the government, such as the, the pension bar people associations. lobby for the government. The government gets bigger. The bigger the government hires more pension people, they lobby. This is the only thing that's growing, Hector. It's growing and it's getting Private bigger. Private corporations, I saw Bethlehem Steel. When I was at Bethlehem Steel, they shut it down. It's, it's dead. It's gone. The one in, in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Just want to remind so. the viewers, if you have a topic that you want us to ask questions for you of your legal uh, officials, email the show at behind us. I strike that. The Hector Montalvo Show at yahoo.com or you can visit the website at behindthescenes.weebly.com. Gentlemen, we have a few minutes left on the show. Can you just tell us what you would like to see change? What type of changes would, um, would you like to see? Oh, Lord. Uh, I've been a big bug about having the cameras in the courtrooms. The courthouse is the only place that you or I or anybody who's watching this show stand equal to government. We are exercising our rights against some government statute or something. And of course, rights should supersede any statute that uh, blocks or infringes our rights. But we don't get to see what's going on in the courtrooms. And if we can take and fix the courts so that they work for us instead of against us, I think very simply, and I'm, I'm, look, I'm a cheap guy, if we just get some cameras in the courtrooms, I think that would be a very big step to educating. And Joe? I have to agree with Don in, on that score and, um, and say that I think that it's going to be the... Fixing the court system is one of the biggest obstacles we face. Devolution of, uh, of political power from the federal government to the state to the local entities as much as possible is our goal. And as I said, uh, personally, I'm running as a candidate for the uh, Governor's Council in District 1. I didn't mention it before, but I'll just uh, mention my website, which is votejoeurenic.com. So if there's anyone out there in District 1, Southern Massachusetts, or if you know people in Southern Massachusetts, please encourage them to vote for me in September. The reason I'm running is to encourage this type, type of political activity, devolution of power to the local entities as much as possible. Well, I want to thank all of you for coming in, taking the time to come in and discuss these important issues. And I want to thank the viewers for watching. I want to thank MCTV and all the crew members who are truly the brains behind this show. Watch us next time here at Behind the Scenes.